I've never seen her like that before. Good evening. Welcome to the August board meeting of the Cape Elizabeth School Department. Um, our first item on the agenda tonight are any adjustments to the agenda. Does anybody on the board have any adjustments to make to the agenda tonight? Anybody in the audience? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Rosemary? Um, Madam Chairman, could we put under communications a discussion of the Maine 2000 letter, please? Okay. Uh, we put under policy subcommittee reports consideration for formation of a Mm-hmm. Any others? Okay. Um, approval of the school board minutes from the meeting of Tuesday, July 30th, 1991. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? Okay. The minutes stand approved as read. Uh, are we having a business manager's report tonight? No. The, uh, since it's the end of the month and we will be having a meeting in two weeks, um, we are not having a business manager's meeting tonight. We'll have the, uh, actually we're almost at the end of the audit, um, and at the last meeting we had the projected end of year report, so we'll be getting that full report next week. Okay. Communications. I have, uh, uh, well, actually, three communications. One, a letter from Michael McGovern, uh, our town manager, uh, thanking us as a system, school system, for help in securing the high school as the site of our evacuation shelter during Hurricane Bob. Uh, he tells us that over 80 citizens of the community utilized the shelter, and I'm sure a great many more were comfortable with the knowledge that it was available. He wants to particularly thank Gary Spencer and the custodians provided in setting up the shelter. I personally did not go down to take advantage of the shelter, but I was glad that we were able to help out. Uh, I also, uh, there was an article in the paper this morning on the SAT scores, and as, thank you, as it um, turns out, I also received a, a summary from uh, Mrs. Merrill, our uh, uh, guidance director at the high school, or our chair of the guidance department. Um, about the SAT scores. I have not had chance to make a copy of this and we will be giving you a full report again in the September meeting, but I just thought since it is in the paper um, and uh, at the time when the reporter called Mrs. Merrill and myself, either one of us had that report. Um, I just want you to note that the verbal CAPE SAT scores came in at 476, which is a fairly good jump from last year's. 
and the math is at 505, which again is higher than last year. And the math looks like it is at the peak of a 10-year cycle, and I think the same thing is true of the verbal. Uh, you will be getting, the, I only have one copy of this, I would be happy to make that available after the meeting or pass it around, but you'll get the complete report um, in September. And also I included in your packet as communication and uh, Mrs. Reed has just asked us to add it as a discussion item, which I indicated would be uh, something that I more or less assumed you would want to do, uh, but it came in as a communication. Um, a uh, policy letter from Commissioner Byther talking about America 2000. Uh, for purposes of summarizing this for anybody in the audience who may be watching, I think you're going to see a good deal about this in the paper. Uh, for the past few months we have been reading about uh, the President's initiatives in education. Um, I think the six national education goals have received a fair amount of publicity. Uh, this is a, another uh, step in the process and communities are being asked to consider um, the option of taking a through the school board vote uh, a stance that they wish to be considered as Maine 2000 or America 2000 communities um, and the requisites prerequisites for that would be the community votes to adopt to accept the national education goals in addition to whatever state or local goals it has already adopted in order to improve education. The community develops strategies towards reaching the national education goals. The community reports periodically on progress toward meeting the goals. And communities engage in examination of what would be needed to develop a new American school, one which breaks the mold and designs new ways for students to achieve these goals. Um, I don't know that we need to read the the six goals, as I say, I think they've been relatively well um, advertised and each board member has them. Um, certainly, I'm sure that, uh, as a matter of fact, the CAPE school system does exceed some of these goals. For instance, the high school completion by the year 2000, the high school graduation rate will increase to at least 90%. Since we have virtually no dropout rate, we are already exceeding that 90% graduation. Um, and some of the others I would say that we certainly uh, are in very good shape on. Uh, one of the goals, the science and mathematics by the year 2000 U.S. students will be first in the world in science and mathematics achievement. I certainly could not sit here and tell you <laughs> exactly how we're going to do that. I know that we have certainly set as local goals the issue of improving our math programs and student results in those areas, so I would feel comfortable and in having you adopt the, all of those goals, as a matter of fact. Okay. Discussion? Were you, did you want us to take a vote tonight? Is that? I would like um, the board's opinion on whether or not it's appropriate at this time to vote uh, as to Cape's, Cape Elizabeth's um, willingness to um, take on these goals or to do it as part of the Southern Maine Partnership, whichever the proper entity may be. Okay. Any thoughts about this? Charlie? Of course, one of the things that goes along with being, being voted as a part of this, um, this goal is the being able to consider for the one million per school and help them develop that. So it's always a, there's a monetary reason also. Perhaps I should explain the, um, there is a mention in the, gov uh, the commissioner's letter about the USM partnership to which we belong. Um, I was at a meeting with other superintendents and the commissioner when we discussed um, information that she had recently had in July, some of which is summarized here, about this thrust and that she felt that uh, Maine would be receiving um, perhaps an early um, invitation to join this as a as a state and possibly be, as she puts it, in the forefront of planning. Um, all of us at that meeting indicated our interest in certainly contributing ideas to the designing of a new American school. I think many of us feel that we've been trying to do that. Um, I think that the issue of who, how that one million dollars is going to be spent is a pretty um, hard one to pin down, but uh, as you say, um, it is certainly 
to even be part of the dialogue, the prerequisite is to indicate as a community you want to be part of the dialogue, and that's a step that would be outlined in her letter. Peter? This uh, only reached me this afternoon, or perhaps I should say I only reached it this afternoon. Uh, I can't think of any reason not to do it. Can anybody else who's had more time to look at it? Uh, no. I mean, it's, it's the, the goals, uh, certainly across the nation, are, are ones we ought to try to meet. Uh, the ones that we're not meeting here in Cape Elizabeth, we certainly intend to. Uh, why shouldn't we be part of this? I, I should think that there wouldn't be a reason on earth, but then why don't we do it? Rosemary? Um, Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we declare our intention to become a Maine 2000 community. Okay. Any further discussion? Oh, sorry. That's right. Now, I any, <laughs> okay, it's been twice seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. That's what I get for going on vacation. Um, any more communications? That's it. Okay, superintendent's report. Well, we are in the process. Uh, my first item is the update of the space study. Um, just to remind people that there will be a report given to the town council and to the school board in a formal way, uh, a written report, no doubt, accompanied by um, charts, graphs, and uh, some kind of uh, presentation. Uh, our target date is the middle of uh, October. I think there's no reason to believe we won't make that. We're starting to have some um, sort of extended committee meetings where we're inviting people in to uh, um, at least inform uh, people gradually about what some of the issues are. Uh, upstairs in the conference room, the superintendent's conference room, um, are uh, various, they're really, they're called options, but I think it's hard to understand what the options are unless you really can come in at a time where I can walk you around and explain them. But you can see that they have listed various ways in which we might use space in our current buildings with some, some projected ideas for what additions might be needed. Um, I think at this point it's uh, impossible to try to summarize exactly what those operations, um, excuse me, options might be. So uh, I just want you to know that we haven't um, forgotten this task or that it, that it's stalled. It is definitely moving along and if you'd like to take a look at any of those um, charts and ask me for some explanation I'd be happy to give them. And we have two board members who are members of that committee in case anybody wants to add to that. Okay. It's going to be an interesting report. <laughs> yes. It's quite comprehensive. Um, okay, the major item in my report tonight was to try to get a handle on uh, what I tend to regard as an annual goal setting process. I, I really have tried as a superintendent to uh, help boards find a process that works for them to update and expand yearly goal setting processes. Uh, since I was not with you last year when you were doing this, I started with the school improvement plan, which is the, um, you ha I gave you a copy of the uh, summary of the goals, the status of goals that, um, that we get every year. We are asked by the end of September to consider those. Uh, boards are asked to vote on their, take any additions, deletions, or comments that you wish, and I then file the amended copy. It's been my experience that the forms are not terribly helpful. Uh, if you weren't part of the original discussion, the uh, computerized summary of the goal doesn't really give you the meat of the issue. But um, in my case, looking down over them and asking administrators and some board members who have been part of that process, I could fill in the blanks pretty well. I think it's also interesting to note, however, that when you're dealing with a school improvement plan that was originally put together five or six years ago, you find you have some issues that appear to have been completed. That's one of the marks against uh, in the, um, the coding of the goal. Uh, and yet they seem to be coming around full circle. For instance, I noticed that a consideration of space was marked as completed, and I'm assuming that that was because a decision was made about what to deal with a, an immediate issue, probably the portables, um, and yet here we are back again looking at space. Um, lest you feel terribly discouraged by that, I have to point out that that is the way it is. I mean, we always are trying to, struggling to get 
a better handle on long range planning um, but we always had the short range needs that sometimes just don't go away so in your packet I have in included some notes from recent administrative meetings where we have talked about some issues that we will be dealing with I have also included as I said that uh, review of current school improvement plan and ask for your um, input and review of those issues I noted in your um, packet that you don't have to vote on that tonight this it's perfectly all right for you to wait until September to vote on that but if you have any input this would be a good time to to do it and then I also note that we have um, in fact we had another meeting this afternoon pushing the process a little further uh, we have very serious intentions of having some community dialogue so we're looking at a combination of large group small group meetings um, we recognize fully that there are day-to-day -day issues in the schools that will be very appropriately addressed between parents and staff or small meetings of one kind or another dealing with a particular issue, um, curriculum issue or uh, change in program issue. Uh, we do not intend the community dialogues to take the place of any of those kinds of meetings. We are seeking for an avenue to involve the community in searching for a vision that could really um, set a, a, a goal for long-range planning. Um, that kind of thing is what we're looking for there. Uh, so those are the issues that I've included. I'd be willing to, um, I'm anxious to hear any feedback you have. Charlie? <coughs> Under goal number 0014, can you just explain what DEV sense of community awareness I'm assuming that's develop. Um, right. I don't that's have. Completed? Well, I didn't mark these. I mean, this uh, the process for, for anyone who is who is perhaps unaware of the process. Um, the original goal setting process was mandated in the 1984 School Improvement Act. Uh, my quick recollection is that the first plan was required by 86. Does anybody remember when it or was 85 or 86? So if it was 86, this is the fifth year. If it was 85, this is the sixth year, and I'm a little, frankly, unclear. Um, as a result of that initial process, all school districts in the state of Maine were required to fill out forms that were quite extensive, um, listing goals in these areas, just as you see them here. Leadership, curriculum, instruction, staff development, and facilities. It seems to me there was one other originally, but anyway, those are the major ones. Um, whatever process a district used, they were uh, encouraged to use uh, as broad a base of gathering opinion as possible. I know as a Cape resident, I received a survey that was mailed home. I'm assuming that was part of the original school improvement uh, planning process. And uh, I'm assuming all of that kind of process went on. I know that there was a uh, group that included staff as well as school board representation. I don't know for sure who was, who was involved. Um, then districts sent those forms up to the state. They were much longer, bulkier, and far more detailed than you see here. They were also attached to action plans. That is, you were asked to give a goal and then to attach how you were going to do it, when you were going to do it, what resources you would use. Um, at some point, somebody in, in the state, in their wisdom, um, decided that that was unmanageable, that we couldn't keep keep track of all of that and they've, they've taken a goal uh, such as develop sense of community awareness it was no doubt a far more complex goal when it was was originally put um, and that's what we have and so when you come into this process as I am now coming in and I imagine some of you are um, it takes a little imagination <laughs> to understand exactly what was behind I think we do have and I did find in the in the files some of the original statements and that's how I, I have interpreted them then it has been a yearly, um, uh, it's also part of the mandate that uh, the board review these on a yearly basis um, I think to whatever suggestions you wish, uh, discuss them, you can add to them. Uh, there are a few here that look, you know, they're sort of out of sync with the, you know, an additional curriculum, an additional instruction, and they probably were added at some point along the way. And then we refile them. Well, I have to say, this is my third year on the board, and it's the first time I've seen anything like this. Yeah, I think so. Is that good or bad? <laughs> it's not good. I don't think that's good. Well, I, I get the feeling that it's, uh, 
it kind of reminds me of that statement that Damon Runyon made about New York City. It'll be a nice place if they ever get it finished. Uh, you know, so many of these things are, are ongoing. They never really stop. I have seen this before, I believe. Uh, but I think it's a much more valuable tool for us uh, than it is probably for the state. I'm not quite sure why the state instituted or how much use they really make of it. I guess that's really the question. Do they make any use of it or is it something you just send off to Augusta? Uh, we have uh, a lot of, of these things that we have been working on a regular basis. Uh, but I don't think this particular form is the form from which we've been working. Oh, I agree. I'm, I think that unfortunately the the um, one of the problems with mandated um, routines is that if it's mandated, somebody then becomes responsible for checking to see whether they're done or not, and there is no way that one can look at uh, really interesting and um, in in meaty um, summaries from 136 districts when perhaps two ISGs are assigned to to reading this. So the the pressure on the state to have some kind of quick check. Um, approach, I imagine, is is what resulted in this. But nevertheless, we are. I mean, the bottom line is, as superintendent, I'm required to bring this to you in some format, and you are required to vote at it. Uh, excuse me, vote on it. Now, I could have brought it to you in some summary form, and and after a while, having dealt with this in another district, I did tend to bring to the board at a, at a meeting a more summarized form and with the backup that people were familiar with. Um, so the form itself is not the point, but the process is um, important, and both from your own need to set goals, and I think that's really important for, for boards, and also our need as a district for the staff, for the parent community to understand what those goals are, this is a part of the process. If it's a part of the process you want to summarize, you want to use in some kind of um, different format, fine, but it is a, a piece of the puzzle anyway. Rosemary? Maybe because I work with computer language and forms, I didn't find the format objectionable. One of the things I thought about, though, under the status key, which was just revised, but maybe we could revise it again, um, suggest to the state that they add a code called RO, which means reopen. And my suggestion is that we consider reopening goal number two, three, 7, 14, 17, 34, uh, 38, and that we marked A003 as complete. I'm sorry, I lost some of those words. I'm sorry. 2, 3, 7, 14, 17, 34, 38, as reopened, and A003 as complete after tonight's meeting. Well, I think the, uh, are, are we going to do this tonight? Uh, because each one of those is a subject, and uh, you know, I think we'd have to look at all of them, and then we'd have to look at a new list, because this is last year's list, isn't it? That's correct. What, the way this, this works for the state is that whatever the original list was sent in, now it was sent in as I uh, indicated with an action plan which supposedly it was a guesstimate required as part of that process. When would a district complete a certain um, statement of purpose? Um, and as part of that, it sent back to the district to say, yes, we completed it, no, we didn't, or it's ongoing, and um, it, the process has only been going on for five or six years, so it's a little unclear how long you're supposed to be working off the same goals. Although part of the original mandate, if I remember correctly, was that we were required to um, look hard at the process at the fifth year. And uh, there was some talk about requiring communities to go through some kind of broad-based community effort every fifth year. Uh, and, and, you know, really realistically look at that, that process. I would suggest that if, you know, they do so no bad every year. You don't. Yeah. Well, you can. I mean, that, that's, that's why some of these, I think, have been added, and you, and you can do that. Um, 
but um, I think it's important to, before this gets to somewhat um, um, unhelpful proportions, to boil it down, to categorize, to re chunk issues. Um, we're also, of course, struggling with the whole issue of reaching out to the community from perhaps a somewhat different point of view than might have been the other uh, a few years ago. So um, you always have to work on making goals understandable. Charm? You do have a mandated time that this has to be in, and that's September 30th. That's correct. So we essentially only have a month. So we either start discussion now and continue it at our next meeting. I don't, I don't think it's critical that we define every problem that is on the list rather than we accept an administrative appraisal of where we are and then readdress each of these subjects perhaps in policy where they repeatedly are going to be addressed in adopting new policy statements. So I don't, I don't think it would be that massive of an undertaking to just run through them briefly I suppose if you went to the new status line, you, we could just go down and do the whole thing, and we could reopen some of them, as Rosemary suggests, and, uh, and then send it on. But is that what you want us to do, or, no? or you, you want to do that and bring it to us in September meeting? Well, I was looking for some guidance from you at this meeting because I wasn't sure uh, what your process had been. From what I could gather, it had been pretty much as you indicated that it has not been this particular piece of the yearly update has not necessarily been made a part of the board review. Um, now, I think the administrative summary is fine. I mean, the administrators and I can go down through these things and um, uh, make some kind of, of comment on them. Uh, but actually, the comments, you know, OK. I do have one more. Since we're undertaking taking a complete change in our uh, uh, salary uh, framework, I think that's something that should be added. We have a mandated career ladder contract which is completed under these goals. We now have new goals of compensation. I, I don't really feel like I own this. I mean, I, I feel. <laughs> Um, I agree with what Mark said that that we this is kind of a formality that we ought to go down through and, and indicate where we're at and then note the ones that we feel need to be examined but but one of the things that I wanted to talk about tonight was um, what this particular board sees as goals for the coming year and one of the things in the packet um, Dr. Goldman had mentioned that, that the goal for the year, one of the goals is to define the problems. Is that what we intend to do as well as a board? And if so, how are we going to go about doing that? Because I don't want to get into November and December and this board has not defined what we're about this next year. So um, that's something that we can think about tonight and talk about some more in September. Um, or decide tonight, whatever your wishes are. Any other thoughts about this particular document? Well, I would say that uh, if uh, the superintendent came back to us at the September meeting uh, with her recommendations as to how this would be filled out, which I believe is your intention, it's, uh, it's, that would give us yeah. the opportunity to do what Rosemary's already done, which is to look at it and say, hey, wait a minute, I don't agree that this is completed anymore. Mm -hmm. We've reopened mm -hmm. it already, or let's reopen it. And it would give us the chance uh, uh, to, to do that and then, you know, mail it into you or, or call in uh, and uh, or give it to Jan. Um, that's what I would suggest. Is that acceptable for me? Could I have a point of clarification? Um, the, the, the process this month has been to show you what the process is, to indicate some of the things that the administrators, myself, are looking at, um, issues that you also have been a party to discussing, and some issues as far as trying to bring the community more into this process in a variety of ways. Now, 
uh, as far as the State Department process is concerned, I'm very comfortable with looking at these and making a recommendation for new status and then distributing that in the board packet so that at the um, September 10th, I think it is, meeting, um, you, could be, you could come prepared to either accept my recommendation or, or reject it or change it in any way you wish. Um, I still think that there is a problem with, with a list of, I don't know, I haven't counted these, whatever they are. Does anybody count them? <laughs> Must be 40-odd, anyway. Um, uh, goals that, um, that certainly exceeds what I'm, I think is a manageable <coughs> um, t uh, yearly set of goals for most school boards. I mean, I think more useful goals are the ones that are sort of categories of issues with some specific things that are called to your attention. I'm not sure how much I can get out of this document to, to yield that. We may simply have to re re regard this as a somewhat ongoing state of things and not make too much of it, and at the same time list some of the specific goals that you, as a group, want us to concentrate on for this year. Yeah, that, that's what I would like to see happen, is, is to, to use that, this document in, in the way you just described and then have a, a discussion um, you know, with this board about particular goals for this community okay. um, for this coming year. I can do that. Would it be appropriate to, to set up a time now for us to have that kind of discussion, or should we just plan on having that at the September board meeting? Well, I doubt very much that we'll be able to manage a workshop on goal setting between now and, and the September meeting. Um, and there are some already identified issues, the career ladder um, committee work that's already part of an agreement that we will be working on. And you know that that's going to be one of your goals. We have the building issues, which have been um, and are in the process of being identified in more uh, substantive forms. It's clearly a goal for the school board this year to understand and deal with them. Um, I know that there are some specific community and school board issues that you may wish to um, call attention to as part of this process next in, in two weeks. I'm not sure you need a workshop to do that mm -hmm. um, and have people bring the, be, come to the meeting with those. It might be helpful if you could get them to me or just give me a call so that I could prepare a sheet and say these are the goals that people have have uh, given to me and to make sure that it's part of the board packet. I'm just thinking of the manageability of the school opening and so forth. How do we how do we do this? We have a lot of the discussions already going on. The question is how do you want to prioritize things? Okay, so if it's acceptable then between now and the next board meeting board members should get the goals that, that they um, would like to see achieved in this next year to Connie, and we'll put it on the agenda for the September meeting. Very good. Okay. And you know, feel free to call, too, because sometimes it's easier just to pick up the phone. And, but if you like to send me things in writing, it's fine. Okay. okay. Anything else under the superintendent's report? No. Nope. Okay. okay. That's it. Policy subcommittee report, um, the K through 12 substance abuse policy, second reading. Madam Chairman, mm -hmm. <coughs> I took your suge our suggestions from our previous meeting and went back to my committee and we tried to, we discussed them and we tried to enter first them to the policy. Uh, there was still, of the three things that we needed to change, there was still the problem on the student policy under standard of conduct. The last sentence, violation of the standard may result in the student being subjected to suspension, expulsion, or other disciplinary or corrective actions. The committee felt that if you made it a stronger word such as will that it might negate people um, coming forth on a voluntary basis which is which is one of the high school administrative um, guidelines for uh, alcohol tobacco and other drug rules 
it has to do with voluntary referral. Um, in thinking about it some more, I, I feel corrective measures co covers that, that the strong language of suspension, expulsion, or other disciplinary or corrective measures, I feel those, those come under corrective measures. And therefore, I, I don't have a problem with changing that, that word to a stronger word. One other word that could be added to further uh, assure people that it is not a punitive intent is to have the wording change to um, violation of the standard will result in the student being subjected to suspension, expulsion, or other disciplinary, corrective, or rehabilitative measures. So that rehabilitation as a positive process is clearly inc included in that sentence. Yeah, I think that that's a very good point. I think uh, corrective actually is, uh, is redundant when you have uh, disciplinary. Uh, you could just put in the word rehabilitative. Okay. And cross out corrective or other disciplinary re rehabilitative measures or rehabilitative measures. Sorry. Other thoughts? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, are we talking about drugs, alcohol, and tobacco in this policy? Yes. I only saw the mention of tobacco once. Tobacco is not in the employee policy. It's in the it's in the student It's policy. in the student policy. I'm sorry, are we doing the employee? I beg your no, pardon. Just no, I, I, I was just pointing out that oh. there's... That I, was, I was covering the student policy first. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, okay. But I, I think I only see tobacco stated once in this policy. Otherwise, it is referred to as alcohol and other drug dependency or drug use. I just would like it to be clear that this does also include tobacco as a drug. Where does it say tobacco? I don't know. I can't find it. Is tobacco considered a drug? Oh boy, that's, that's arguable. Mm. Well, not really. Nicotine no. is clearly a drug mm. and it's in tobacco. Now whether you're going to include this as a significant a drug is alcohol is of significant import, but clearly tobacco is a drug. It has physical and psychological dependencies, so it's clearly a drug. Isn't this an issue that um, former Surgeon General Coop got involved with um, when he was trying to change the listing or add it to the list of scheduled drugs, or I forget exactly what the point was, but I remember that that came up. Um, I did note, I noticed that it was in the policy, um, and again, I'm having difficulty finding the exact site here, and I guess we should find it. Um, but I did note in the state, or uh, the MSMA recommended language, uh, tobacco does not appear. Um, and it is, it is an issue that I think one needs to think about carefully, um, that we have many students, even young students, who experiment with smoking. Um, the, the, uh, the schools do deal with that. On the other hand, I don't know how, you know, no, none of us would claim to be totally successful in, um, in all aspects of keeping that out of the schools. We do, however, have a policy, an administrative policy of dealing with it, which can carry suspension. I think it would be unusual for us to, to ex go so far as expel a student, but I'm sorry. Actually, one of the points, though, in the tobacco policy, at least in this, po in this book, it requires suspension for at least one day. And uh, in terms of tying hands of administrators, I think that that probably does more to damage an attempt to control tobacco abuse on the premises. Because if tobacco was included under this policy, you would have the option of rehabilitative mm -hmm. options, mm -hmm. uh, less aggressive options um, compared to a full day of suspension. And so I think that the current policy on tobacco is more restrictive and perhaps may be less helpful than including tobacco under this policy. Um, well, when I saw it in this, this uh, policy, I myself did not take it out or, or recommend to you to take it out. I just did note right. that it's not always included. It's under standard of conduct. Yeah, and it's somewhat awkward. It says to be under the influence of alcohol 
or tobacco or scheduled drug. Uh, I'm not aware of having heard before the expression to be under the influence of tobacco. Is that, is that a technical, I mean, does that happen? Is that possible? Technically, you could be. It would be very difficult. You, can, you could obtain nicotine levels. It, it, practically, it does not occur. But there are certainly people who have come in who are both caffeine or nicotine toxic and have significant responses to it. But it's not a practical consideration in terms of school usage. So if we were to insert tobacco as well, it would, every other time it says alcohol and or other drugs, we would also add alcohol, tobacco, and or other drugs. Is that? That was my question. Happen? It was only on understanding of contact and yeah. not used consistently throughout. Any other thoughts about that? I'm in favor of including it. I think it's less restrictive than the current tobacco policy, but in, in, as, as uh, Dr. Golden was pointing out, tobacco you have to realistically accept is going to be a significant part um, of, of the high school agenda, and it has to be addressed with some amount of uh, consideration for repercussions if it's, it's, if it's too aggressive a policy. So therefore, it would have to come under prevention intervention anywhere you list the other Mm-hmm. Because prevention has to do with your educational programs or health curriculum, mm -hmm. which that could be addressed also. Well, I believe it is. I mean, I'm sure that there are pieces of the current health curriculum and um, various other activities that do try to do this. I mean, we, we do, of course, emphasize counseling for drug use, um, even bringing in personnel to help in that. Uh, I don't know for sure what's available here. I have sometimes found it rather difficult in the schools to find equally uh, effective um, um, personnel to counsel students about um, not smoking. I mean, there are there's, you know, various people out there in that business, but um, we haven't, at least in my experience, we have not done much to bring people in. Maybe it's something we need to do. but. Okay, so we would change, every time it says alcohol and or other drugs, we would add tobacco and on the, we would say violation of this standard will result in the student being subjected to suspension, expulsion, or other disciplinary or rehabilitative measures. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Well. I think we did keep correct it disciplinary, or did you feel that that was a redundancy? Well, my suggestion was that it was a uh, that it was redundant, but uh, I'm I not agree. sure we actually got an agreement on so that. So I, I, I think it's redundant. Okay, I just hadn't crossed it. Out. I wasn't sure. Okay. Other comments? Well, does this uh, track the the state statute? Uh, I'm a little uncomfortable with putting tobacco in between drugs and alcohol, and we just want to make sure that we're not going well beyond the state statute, which makes it, uh, I think, a, a illegal to sell tobacco to people under 18. Mm -hmm. And the state statute, obviously, on possession of drugs and, and uh, you know, alcohol is different. Alcohol is 21. Drugs is totally prohibited. Right. Are we are we creating any? Are we trying to put three things on one track when they should be on, on separate tracks? Well, the reference to tobacco what has always been in here, and we had it re reviewed by council, and he did not take it out. Okay. Um, it is not in the employee policy. I look carefully to see that because I do understand from a practical matter that we can deal with different issues there. Um, not to say that uh, if nobody's supposed to smoke on school property, that is not a permission given to people. But still, if, you're, you know, if your relationship is employer-employee, it's one relationship. Um, administrator, teacher, student, another, another relationship. Um, so that the employee policy does not, I believe, if I read it properly, does not include it, and the uh, student one does. I think that that would make me feel that we're 
not stepping into some quagmire. I, I agree, yeah, thank you. Okay, do I hear a motion then to accept this statement of policy on alcohol, tobacco, and other drug abuse? So moved. Second. Second. Further discussion? I just had a question. Um, sh should it say drug uh, end with or other drug use, or is it? I just have a, a question about the word abuse. I'm sorry, I, I hope this is No, that's okay, but what, I didn't understand what's the um, question. Statement of policy on alcohol, tobacco, and other drug use, Adding as opposed to abuse. Oh. Oh. That's an interesting point. Yeah. Unless one is thinking of a drug in the sense of uh, allowable prescription drugs, which are mentioned, cited here, uh, but when you have a student policy on alcohol, it would seem to to flow that it's alcohol use and not alcohol abuse that is the issue. I think in, any any use of tobacco, alcohol, or other recreational drugs by a minor is clearly abuse. Mm -hmm. It is in abuse. My yes. Yeah, I agree. I toyed with asking the question because of the, I, I support that if that's the understanding. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Oh, Charlie. Do you want to add um, student policy on alcohol, tobacco, and other drug abuse, or do you want to leave that since you've changed everything else? Include tobacco on those. You and Yes. In that first paragraph, you, in that. As a heading. Right here. Uh, yes. Yeah. In both headings, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In both headings. All in favor? Okay. The um, second reading of the policy of, on alcohol and drug abuse for employees. Madam Chairman, mm -hmm. we also instituted the standard of conduct applies before, during, and after school hours or any other school system location defined as follows and gave the same explanation that is in the student policy on what is a school system location. That was the only change to that policy from the first reading. Okay. Comments? It's excellent. Okay. Do I hear a motion to accept this as the policy for employee? To move. Second. All in favor? Up for further discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Okay. Yeah. Can I make a comment, please? Mm -hmm. um, are we going to uh, take time to explain to the public and to the students that this uh, policy is now a policy and not an administrative procedure, and that the school board does back the staff on enforcement? Yes, I think that what I would expect to happen, um, first of all, handbooks would be updated. Um, in the high school handbook, there is information anyway, which I think for the most part, this is consistent with. There may be some statements here that are certainly clearer, spelled out more firmly. Um, you know, it is an improvement over, uh, in some respects, what there was. In other handbooks, uh, K-8, I mean, I don't suppose we will be publishing this language in Pond Cove uh, handbook, but um, we will certainly make some kind of effort to communicate to parents of even young children what what the general guidelines are. And as uh, the superintendent, I see it as my, my uh, obligation to make sure that all employees of the system are given a copy of the employee um, policy. And uh, we, we'll, I'll discuss with the administrators to the, the degree to which we might have conversations. But certainly, with adults, we need to get it out. Madam Chairman. When I undertook this with the community team a year ago, it was when I came back to you with the first reading, I explained to you that this would be a two-part process. First process, part of the process would be to implement a policy. And from that, we would go back with your approval or our approval to the community team and work with the administrators of each building on, on either implementing or, up, or, 
for revising current administrative policies based on this policy. Thank you for all, all of your work on that, Charlie. That was a big project and still is. Okay. Uh, next item is I have a board chairman's report, brief though it is. Um, you have in your packet a tentative calendar. There was an adjustment to agenda on the oh, policy subcommittee. I'm, I'm sorry, you're right. Okay. The curriculum subcommittee. Um, do you want to? I would like to just request that the uh, policy subcommittee consider formation of a curriculum subcommittee and uh, return with their suggestions uh, to the upcoming school board meeting. Okay. Comments? What, what would this committee do and, and how quickly? Uh, the next Th that's, that's what the policy subcommittee would, would investigate and then present to the, to the school board for consideration and discussion. And, and the policy committee um, is going to be meeting soon to, to talk about all of these issues, is that right? That's correct. Okay, so this would be at the September or October meeting or? At September. I think we can probably have something back to you by the September one. Okay. It, it depends on whether the people in the subcommittee can meet, but we'll discuss that after this meeting, try to find a, an appropriate date. Okay. Um, does, that, does that answer your question? Would you like a motion? Do we need a motion for this? Or? I think the, the issue now with subcommittees, and it's an issue that we do need to clarify the process. The main issue um, to be clear about is that a subcommittee is empowered or is instructed, would be the word I think, by the committee as a whole to look at a particular issue. In this case, it's been asked to uh, look at the issue of pot, the feasibility or the, or the issues that might be surrounding formation of a board subcommittee um, looking at curriculum. What does that mean? What would be the processes? What are its legitimate areas of jurisdiction? What would not be, or at least from the standpoint of policy, what, where does that all work out? Um, I doubt very much that we could get to the absolute bottom of that issue in one short meeting, but we can at least frame the issue and come back. Mm -hmm. The point is that the committee as a whole really should clarify that this is a task that this subcommittee is investigating, not a task that they're going to go out and complete but that they are a research arm of the committee as a whole. Uh, and it's that kind of working relationship between board subcommittees and the committee as a whole that's important to maintain so we don't lose track of uh, perhaps a subcommittee getting into an area that they haven't been authorized to get into. Um, normally that's not a huge issue, but it's just wise to be aware of it. So real proper procedure does ask uh, a request like this to come to the committee as a whole, the committee whole discuss if anybody has any concerns uh, or instructions or issues they want that particular subcommittee to look at. We go back out, I meet with them, we you know, do what we can and come back to you with a report. That's, that's all we're trying to clarify here is the procedure. Well, then maybe we ought to hear just a little bit more about what you know, the work plan would be, say, before the September uh, meeting are you would you be coming back and say well tell me what what you have in mind what, what i have in mind is is uh developing some arm of the school board which would address curriculum and uh do that in a formalized way which would be at the direction of the entire school board how that committee would function is not clear and so that would fall under the jurisdiction of the policy subcommittee which has already been formed during the organizational meeting so I don't have an answer in terms of what they would do, but I, I guess my motion, and I think it does, would require a motion, is that uh, I, th I think there's a need for the school board to address curriculum, and uh, per perhaps, not necessarily, perhaps the way to do that would be to have a curriculum subcommittee, and we would ask the uh, subcommittee on policy to address that and respond with their, their findings to the entire school board. Comment? Yeah, I just uh, like to point out that to a certain extent that discussion on broad curriculum issues has already started with the common core dialogue we're trying to set up. And um, you know, I don't know if you're talking about nitty gritty pieces of the program that are in place right now, 
or the broader visionary where are kids going to be when they get out of school or some combination those of those. would be questions for that subcommittee if we elect to form such a subcommittee. The, um, one of the things in, in the policy book that we will be reviewing is there are a number of things listed under curriculum, uh, curriculum policy that we may wish to adopt and that would again fall under the curriculum subcommittees a research arm as Dr. Goldman described to present back to the board their findings and suggestions. I think that's a good point though we certainly don't want to have any duplication. So how would you resolve well, that? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I, maybe we should just talk about that at the committee level. Uh, I don't know. But I mean, we do have this work ongoing, but it, it really is not addressing particular um, program issues. And I don't know if we are planning on covering some of those as part of workshops or, or what, but I think we need to somehow clarify. Um, but at this point, the Common Core does not report to the school board per se. There is no no arm within an organizational framework for Common Core to go back to the school board. Is that correct? That's my understanding. Well, <coughs> this is one of those iceberg issues. Um, I think the most um, efficient way of getting into this issue is to ask the sub policy subcommittee to spend a little time um, investigating the feasibility of an arm of the school board uh, that would deal with curriculum. What exactly is it that people mean by dealing with curriculum? Uh, once we clarify some of that, I think we'll be a little better able to understand um, whether that is necessary, prudent, uh, advisable, or, or perhaps some other way, or uh, that, it, that there is a uh, certainly a, a task for a curriculum subcommittee, but it isn't exactly perhaps meeting the needs that you have in mind. But since I don't know yet what those are, I can't respond to them. Charlie? Madam Chair, one of the frustrations of last year was that because of the issues that we had to deal with, we very rarely ever talked about curriculum issues. I can see the merits of a curriculum subcommittee of at least some element of the board keeping on track of curriculum and reporting back to the board as a whole, and I would support that. I just because of our past history, the past year. I yeah. certainly, sorry. Okay. Well, I want to make sure you know. We, one thing we haven't established with the seven-person board is to what extent we can have a collegial kind of natural flow of conversation. In the first, the last couple of meetings, we have kind of tossed it back and forth. I think it's worked pretty well, but we never really got consensus in particular. No, that's fine because I was flipping my head <laughs> so back good. and forth to look for hands, so just jump right in. Uh, I, I share your frustration with uh, the uh, little amount of time we spent on educational issues, you know, in the last year. Uh, and, and I think it's terribly important uh, to get whatever discussion we have about the curriculum, you know, on the right track from day one. And I think this is the, the first time this board has had a chance to really address that issue. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I guess I, I don't come with any particular thought as to how it should be done. It ought to be done. But let's make sure that we're doing it right, because there's nothing, nothing more important than our curriculum. I mean, this is not a review of the school lunch program. Uh, you know, this is where we really ought to be focusing the majority of our efforts. And so really my only question is, 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 this, is, this the, is this the way and the moment? Certainly it's the moment. Is it the way to start? Well, for, for one thing, there are board members who are working on the Common Core um, issues, and I think that should be broadened in any case, um, you know, and, as well as getting more board members um, involved in the total quality and, and, the, and those other issues. I mean, in, in a sense, all board members have to be involved in this to some extent, but um, Well, what would be the interconnection between that work and this subcommittee? Well, it, it seems to me that that really has to be part of the subject. You can't splinter out, it, it seems to me, the curriculum into the, um, you know, just the day-to-day the -day things that are going on right now and the longer-term things. Some, somehow we have to get those to mesh. Um, and, there, and there is work, you know, going on on the long-term uh, thinking. Um, and somehow we've got to get, I, I don't know, you know, what is the right way to get 
those day-to-day -day concerns in there with the right Certainly there should not be redundancy in terms of half the board members being on curriculum subcommittee and half the board members being on, on the core curriculum. Um, however, there is, is and, and I, I don't think I, I understood an answer to this question uh, the first time, I don't know of a way that the, that committee that currently exists reports to the board for action. I, I don't think that happens. Is, is there a, an, an organizational flow chart? Does that occur? Well, I still feel the fact that that's a, there, there are many committees working in the school. The school system as a whole is responsible to the board. Therefore, when you talk about a, a flow chart that says this committee it has been uh, empowered, I mean, at some point, uh, all curriculum gets, um, is, is part of the organization and business of the school. Mm -hmm. The issue, uh, gets into the, I mean, for instance, the Common Core discussion was one that the superintendent set up in order to respond to some of the issues that I've been hearing or had heard or identified from board members. Um, I mean, we don't, just simply do not run the kind of organization that identifies a single issue and sets up a committee to only take care of that, except for instance, something as specific as buildings and maintenance mm -hmm. and total quality and some of those other kinds of things, which do not necessarily exclude curriculum. Uh, I don't think there is any organizational, um, uh, or any organization as complicated as running a school business and trying to explain that to people, what are the interconnections with pieces, at least people who, run far more complex or bigger business organizations tell me that they're, they're confounded when they try to understand how do we deal with even a 1,500 or 1,600 pupil school district and talk about individual learning for all of those and keep the business going and w what is the exact relationship of the board. So there is always an area of this that is very frustrating, especially to board members in the sense of, well, how do we get a handle on it? Where do we grab this particular tiger? Mm -hmm. Um, I do think if you uh, look at the information that was included in the, um, for instance, the chapters I sent you from the fifth discipline trying to talk about uh -huh. institutional learning, I think that if you really take a good look at total quality management, I think if you really take a good look at uh, the issues that the administrators were talking about that I summarized in the, um, the meetings that we had before, you know, last week and so forth, you will see a curriculum very much embedded in all of that. Uh -huh. uh, it may be more tacit or more... Um, less obvious in the sense that it's, it, you know, if you haven't been working with it, it may not, you know, leap off the page at you, but it's all there. Um, that's why I do believe that the, um, the issue of what would be a, the, uh, a useful and meaningful and satisfying function of a curriculum subcommittee uh, is one that requires a lot more discussion than we can have spontaneously without, I mean, I would have to prepare a lot to give you a sense of exactly what I think. And since this has come up somewhat unexpectedly, um, I'm, that's really all I can say at this time. Rosemary? Uh, yes, we've heard referral to uh, total quality management several times, both from Ian and the su superintendent. And one of the basic uh, beliefs of total quality management is that you take time to d uh, define the problems before you start uh, finding a solution. So I think in light of the fact that we really haven't defined which areas of curriculum we need to look at first, other than, of course, math and science in the broad terms, um, that we should uh, allow for the establishment of the uh, subcommittee on curriculum, and I would make a motion to that effect. Okay. Uh, one of the things since I've been on the board that seems to happen is that curriculum discussions end up being hit or miss. and you have a workshop and you talk about them and then you lose track of them and you get sidetracked and six months goes by and it, and these are probably the kinds of issues that we get asked about more often than any other from from the uh, from the people in the community so I, I would support looking into this if for no other reason than to have a formal way of keeping track of um, you know where we are with with everything, just to have that sense that at least we have an overall picture of what's happening and, and what's planning, uh, what's in the planning stage. So, um, do I hear a motion then to um, to have the 
policy committee um, explore the possibility of setting up a curriculum subcommittee? I think Rosemary yeah, gave his motion. Is that the motion? Right, except for her motion. I think you asked for a, a, a subcommittee right off, didn't you? Or did you ask for the policy subcommittee to address it? That's what I intended. She okay. asked for creation. And okay. 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 A second to that, then. Okay, we have a second. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. I'm sorry I That's forgot right. to add that. That was an important <laughs> item. Okay. Um, board Chairman's report. A tentative calendar of monthly school board meetings and workshops. And we have th the yellow sheet in our packet. Um, are there any um, thoughts about the workshops and any other workshops that you might like uh, topics explored? And the dates, are they agreeable for everybody? Rosemary? Uh, the dates are fine with me. My question was on the October 22nd meeting. Uh, is that something that could possibly be a joint town council school board workshop with the explanation of the options from the design team? That is probably going to be an excellent time to do that. I obviously can't speak for the town council, but um, the timing would be right. Unless the town council was more interested in having something of an exploratory nature even before that's final. I don't know. I can look into that. But certainly sometime around that time. Well, my follow-up question is, will it be ready by September 24th for um, presentation? I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I mean, you know, that it, it, it probably it could be an exploratory, I guess, if that was, you know, sometimes people like to kind of have a, a workshop to get the issues out before there's a final report. So, you know, I, I don't know if that's better um, for these purposes or not. One or the other would certainly be uh, a target. It's a big area. Comments? The only observation I have is that, uh, unfortunately, on September 10th, uh, I have to be in Chicago. Uh, and I mention that uh, just in case anybody else has any mm -hmm. conflicts. Usually we, particularly with a seven-person board, we'll just go ahead and hold meetings. But um, we probably ought to have some system to make sure that we're not, you know, by some freak coincidence, missing three or four people. Mm -hmm. But, uh, on, on, on the same note, I will be out of town on October 8th. Okay. Madam Chairman? Mm -hmm. What we have done previously, that we didn't so much this past year, is at the end of our meeting, definitely set the date of our next meeting. And that way, anyone who was not going to be in town could let the board be aware at that time. Right, okay, we should continue to do that. So is this all agreeable, the dates and topics? And, okay. Update on the portable repair. Well, it's going. Um, I did go to the town council, uh, explain the, the situation, um, they did vote to uh, five to two to uh, authorize the use of the 71,000, which had come back to the bond issue from the asbestos repair insurance settlement. Um, and I should note that the that the two votes, um, um, the two negative votes, were not opposed to our having use of some of that money. It was just a question of how much. Um, naturally, people are concerned, as, as you certainly evidence concern, about why do we have to do this? Um, all of my conversations with the engineers, with the BPI, and with um, um, any other related people have emphasized that we simply do have to bring these up to code if we want to have a, an engineer stamp on them. They are proceeding. Um, I don't have anything new to say to that, except that they have discovered a, a few more issues as they've been working on it so far they've all been quite manageable uh, but we haven't yet um, gotten into the foundation work be uh, at the two buildings at the middle school all the roof work has been completed and the inside finish should be completed before school starts um, i just want to remind people that these contracts uh, the contract was awarded with the understanding that there would have to continue to be outside work around the buildings until about the third week in october and we have 
certainly sat down and discussed with the engineer the conditions under which that would be done so that they would not be interrupting school more than work does just because it's going on and uh, any safety considerations. Um, so I'm satisfied that we have a method of, of coping with that. Uh, has some concerns um, about some of the issues I have heard uh, that might crop up that would uh, force us to reuse some of that space as we, we continue to try to finish this project. I just have to say that we will do the best we can. Comments? Madam Chair, <coughs> so the, you're starting to get into the underpinning yes, work correct. now. That's correct. The school done. starts in a week, so this will be ongoing. But, That's correct. But okay. I, I have some safety issues. Can you explain how they they plan to guarantee us that for the safety of the children? They're very concerned about liability, and there are, in fact, uh, fairly well worked out procedures that contractors um, use when they are working around occupied buildings. Um, if anything occurs that raises uh, a genuine issue of lack of safety, then we will have to move kids out of the, out of the building and reassign them or reassign the programs. Um, we've already looked at some of those issues so far. We do not see any that would require that. Um, if one crops up, then we have to get the uh, uh, use of the building reduced, and we will do that. The only reason I raise that issue is that most of the work that's been done in our systems in the last three years have been done when students have been there, so I, I know their parents will be concerned. I'm sure they will be, but I think there is a, um, you know, I'm satisfied that the people who are dealing with the project uh, have all of those issues in mind and will advise us accordingly. Thank you. Other thoughts? Okay. Recommendation from Total Quality Management Action, action Team for Reorganization of maintenance, maintenance Operations. I've included in your packet a summary of the, those recommendations, uh, and I'm certainly not, I don't think it would serve any useful purpose at this point to go back over every one of them to summarize them. Um, as we looked at the um, various problems that the members of that group identified um, as uh, getting in the way of getting everything we should get done in those two operations, a lack of system-wide expectations and clarity of expectations came up over and over again. Um, so our first major step is my recommendation to you that Gary Spencer, who has been called a maintenance supervisor, but whose duties have been restricted to the high school, become the system-wide maintenance supervisor. At this time, we're not taking away from him uh, all of the responsibilities for oversight of custodial functions at the high school, um, and we are finding ways of shifting that so that he can make a gradual shift. Um, that's an ongoing discussion, and we'll be coming back to you with some of the ways in which we think that will um, work out. In addition, what, what you see when you look at our maintenance supervisor, uh, maintenance uh, custodial and bus transportation functions, we had uh, Mr. Spencer at the high school dealing with custodial maintenance situations. We had Charlie Freeman at Pond Cove and Middle School dealing with maintenance custodial functions, and he, Mr. Freeman is also our uh, transportation foreman. Obviously, this, this is clearly not a real good uh, organizational chart working in that uh, lineup. So this is our first step to sort that out. Uh, Gary will then become the person that all the principals, uh, myself, um, De La Belle, will turn to when we have a, uh, an identified maintenance project. The sheet I gave you also points out that we have some sorting out to do. We have some small maintenance repair things that custodians do do, can do, can continue to do. Um, there's been some confusion as to who's responsible for what. So this is a uh, step in the way of ongoing unsnarling of those kinds of confusions uh, so that the action I'm seeking from you would be an authorization to um, continue in that process and name Gary Spencer as the maintenance supervisor for the district. So you want that tonight? Mm -hmm. to okay. If you're prepared. Yep. Yeah. Do I hear a motion to recommend Gary Spencer for that position? So moved. Second? There was a second down. 
Um, further discussion? Rosemary? Should that motion also include the reorganization? Um, yes, I mean, actually what, what you can frame the motion to accept the superintendent's recommend or the, the recommendations from the total quality task force as stated, and we'll affix the recommendations. Okay. So do I, okay, so the motion would be to accept the total quality task force recommendations as stated. Charlie and Rosemary mm -hmm. moved in second. And further discussion? All, Charlie? Madam Chairman, I just need some clarification on item six of that report. Uh, Charlie will concentrate his efforts on supervising bus driver custodial schedules and the custodial functions of the middle school in Pond Cove. The bus driver custodial, those are people who function as, as bus drivers and custodians. That's correct. correct. Okay. Um, there will be a gradual shift. Is he going to, is Charlie still going to be at this point, still in charge of custodial functions at the middle school in Pond Cove? Well, we have two kinds of custodial custodians uh, working in those two buildings. One, uh, the one unit is the driver custodian unit. That is, we have full-time people who work full year round who both drive and do some maintenance custodial duties. Scheduling those people uh, is a somewhat different situation from scheduling custodial work um, in the building from a small group we have who do nothing but custodial work in those buildings. That will be part of our ongoing reorganization and for the time being there's no change in Charlie's relationship with the uh, those two buildings and those duties but I would anticipate some changes down the road. For instance one of the things that total quality certainly encourages is people to look at the uh, ways we organize and, and assign accountability for work from a team structure. Um, accountability does not necessarily only come from some other person surveying your work. It also comes from within. And if we are successful in identifying what are the constraints to people doing what is obviously there to be done, um, we will be changing some of the ways in which we, we track accountability. Accountability can be something as simple as a teacher coming in looking around the room. But the, all of those issues are not easy to pin down, and therefore this is a start, not a finish. So Charlie will be, will be funneling his problems through Gary. So if it's maintenance, one of the things, maintenance. one of the things that's, I think one of the, I don't know what number it is, but, uh, well, it's just number one. Gary and Charlie need to draw up lists of what belongs in a major maintenance list and what can go in a minor maintenance list. This division would be intended to help make it clear whether Gary needs to be directly involved or whether regular custodial duties could take care of the problem. Um, that, again, uh, the idea is to enable people to take care of things on the spot. There is no need to have a bureaucratic oversight here where, you know, some little thing happens, everybody just sits around until Gary can come and tell them what to do. So part of this is to take advantage of the expertise that's in the system and, and uh, make it clear when people are authorized to go ahead and make decisions and do things. To what degree uh, would a team of custodians, for instance, have access to some budget line items in order to do some ordering in order if they're working at night and there's nobody around, how do they respond to emergencies, et cetera, et cetera. It's all part of this. I would also suggest as a, as a consideration in this process of some type of evaluation of those workers also. We're, we're looking at it with the, with the teaching unit and I think it should be a system-wide consideration, mm -hmm. both aides and secretaries and also bus drivers and custodial workers. It has been discussed. Yeah. Oh, just one more question. Um, somewhere in this process, is there going to be a long-term or ongoing maintenance plan drawn up for the schools of things that need to be replaced on a regular basis so we have a broader picture? Yes, I think that's really important for you, especially for budget planning. Um, I, I think, for instance, what's being generated in the building um, renovation study is clearly identifying some baseline mm -hmm. issues in that respect. Um, I know that Gary has documents like that for the high school. Um, and at uh, budget time, the principals and 
actually both Gary and Charlie in the past have been uh, getting together and drawing up some of those. But what we have lacked is that, again, that system-wide clear sense of overview. Um, these, these are the things that one needs to worry about. These are the five-year replacements, the 20-year replacements, and 40-year replacements. Um, we're not going to do that overnight, but this is part of how we get, get a handle on it. Further discussion? All in favor? Thank you. I, sh I also meant to note that I have um, gone to uh, all these units um, and had a meeting with the people who, in some cases, there were people on vacation that I didn't get to, but by and large, I think I re certainly was um, able to speak to almost everybody. And in small group discussion, we're pushing out the parameters of what's been talked about in the, um, in the action task force. It's an effective process. New business, uh, personnel request. I have to add to the, uh, my personnel request, I, I did receive um, just yesterday um, a letter from Karen Cordicamp. You may recall that at our last board meeting, we did appoint her to a fifth grade teaching position. She has been offered and has accepted a position at um, UNE, um, College of New England. And University of New England, and uh, so she is uh, going to be leaving us. Um, we do, however, we immediately, as soon as we had that um, notification, went back to our pool. We had been previously in the summer interviewing people, candidates for fifth grade position. Uh, we have looked at that, been in touch with people, and we are confident that we will have a suitable replacement for the start of school. I do not have a name to give you, but what I'm adding to this tonight is the resignation of Karen Cordicamp. Will, will the parents be notified of the change before school starts? Or? I think that will be possible. I mean, obviously, we're dealing with a long weekend. I don't know about mail. I don't know how much is realistic. Um, we are very much aware of the sensitivity that parents have when they think they have a teacher, and then all of a sudden they're not sure who they have. Uh, perhaps Nancy yes, might. There, uh, there will be a parent letter going out very shortly, probably uh, Thursday. Parents should expect that to be the first thing that they get from the teachers. Thank you. Okay. And the nominations for new teachers, um, which up to this point had rounded out our, our situation, but doesn't quite. Uh, Pamela Dalhouse, uh, special education teacher at Pond Cove School, grades four and five. Tracy Hyde, special education teacher at the middle school, grade eight. Uh, Elizabeth Nielsen, a one-year position, half-time business education teacher. Um, this is, of course, to continue Jerry Seos. Um, we on paid leave of absence, which you approved at the last board meeting. She is the teacher that was filling that slot this past year. And Marianne Dougherty, Life Skills and Health Middle School. Can we do this as a group? Yes, you can. Okay. Do I hear a move um, for the superintendent's nomination for new teachers that were just listed? A motion to accept those? So moved. Mark, second? Peter? Okay. Further discussion? Charlie? Under the position of Life Skills Health Middle School, one of her, the previous instructors, teachers' duties were going to be computer, uh, part of the computer teaching position. How is that going to be handled? My understanding is, is that Randy uh, Perkins will be picking up the whole time. That uh, he's, his schedule has, there may in fact be some piece that somebody else will be covering, but in essence he will be covering those assignments is that correct that is correct for grades four and five, grades four and five. Mm -hmm. so this position is is not a full-time position that's correct point six all in favor okay and um the to accept, to the, accept resignation the resignation of karen cordicam mm -hmm. so moved Second. Rosemary. Further discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Okay. Approval to receive and spend all federal and state grants for the 1991-1992 school year. 
may seem a little strange that you have to give your formal approval to spending money. <laughs> but I do um, at home too, so. <laughs> federal regulations do require us to ask you once a year to give us a formal vote. I um, asked Dwayne Doerr, whose office pretty much covers those funds, to give you a little bit of summary of what they are, and he did include that. Uh, in addition, um, I should note we have a small grant for Chapter 2 funds, uh, not listed on this sheet. Uh, I think they, what was the, the total issue? Slightly less than 10. Right. But as far as federally funded grants, it's all this vote is for. So that the only other one that's not on this list is the Chapter 2, uh, which comes, does not go through the special education services, and it has a somewhat different um, format, but is is still a federal fund. That one, uh, for your information, has been, been uh, used for library materials, uh, which is one of the allowable categories for Chapter 2. So your vote to accept these as, or to enable us to spend these monies, then is um, um, in order. Okay. Do I hear a motion for the approval to receive and spend all the federal and state grants for the 1991-1992 school year? So move. Rosemary, second. Further discussion? Madam Chairman, mm -hmm. <coughs> under Chapter 1, is it the normal course to utilize that money in most systems as a teaching position? Yes, uh, it's very frequently used for it is, excuse me, it is often frequently used for teacher assistance but it is uh, often used to provide tutorial assistance either through the regular teaching, I mean a teacher on staff, or teacher assistant. So that's um, perfectly allowable. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Then um, our next school board meeting is September 10th, and I need a motion um, to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing contract for administrative unit uh, and uh, personnel matter. So moved. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? This meeting is adjourned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.